goes. Now, following man's advice in a lot of ways will get you riches and fame and fortune in this world. But when it comes to eternal goals that hopefully that each of us has, we can't rely on man's systems. That's why the scripture says, I should direct what? According to his word. The decisions that you and I make on a daily basis oftentimes is not based upon our knowledge and application of the word of God. We oftentimes are just quick to make a decision based upon our own wisdom and the wisdom of the world. It doesn't take a lot of time to say, Lord, help me to choose the right way before you make a decision. God has the capability of intervening right then and there and stopping you. Redirecting you, putting a big question mark in your mind. Hmm, maybe I need to step back and rethink this. All it takes is, again, is calling on the name of the Lord with faith rather than saying, oh, well, I'll figure it out as we go on. <laughs> Boy, the messes I've got myself in off of that kind of thinking. The world nor the church can afford for the people of truth, the people of God to continue to take this position on life-changing issues of life. Amen? Amen, somebody. Too long the church is taking this kind of position. I didn't want to use the monkeys because that's normally how it's presented. I think people do a better job. Amen. See, no, we want to pretend like there ain't nothing wrong with us because we're God's chosen people. And that is not true. Every single one of us came out of darkness into the marvelous light. Every one of us, as Paul says, and such were some of you. Okay. We're not perfect. We are saved by the grace of God. And if we try to pretend we're lying to the world and we're lying to ourselves, we have to see things as God sees them. We also have taken the position we don't want to hear anything that challenges our position and who we are and what's going on in the world. I don't want to hear that. It's, it's like you remember in the whiz, the witch said, don't bring me no, I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. Sometimes we've done that even in, in the Lord's church. And then God forbid that we should actually make our voices known in a consistent manner to the world of who God is and what he's capable of doing. God forbid that we should be the voice of saying, I once was lost in sin. And that means sometimes even to our neighbors, to the world at large. And it would not hurt even if we said that to one another. Amen. Some of us would have others to believe, you know, at birth we had a halo. Amen. But let's be honest. We're not for God putting up with our mess. Where would we be? Now, I'm going to be addressing in the heart of this message this morning, just the tip of the iceberg as related to these issues. That's why, again, I use that we've got to move out of the position of not willing to see, hear, or speak to the issues that are challenging the world. Satan is a liar. 
has always been that the case. And so the question is whether or not do we, the people of God, speak truth to these issues? Do we as God people present opportunities for truth to be spoken about these issues? There is a lot that needs to be studied and said about these two issues and not rely on Fox News to give us sound bites to determine whether or not these issues are what they say they are. I believe we have qualified individuals in our fellowship that can speak to these issues who have done research to be able to present to us the pros and cons of all of these issues that, again, we're wrestling with. Even gender identity, which is, again, one of those issues that it's coming. We will not be able to avoid it. The question is, do we begin to prepare ourselves? to speak truth with compassion and love? Or do we continue to be people who throw rocks at things because we don't like it or we don't understand it? So my hope this morning is to spur us on to love and good works, that we look at developing these kinds of continuous teaching opportunities that we invite the people of God in the community to hear what saith the Lord regarding these issues. Because it's easy to rely on other sources to determine for us what is truth and what is not. And I think we can ill afford to continue doing that. We've got generations behind us that we are accountable to. And if we don't step in now, there's a greater chance we're going to lose even more of the next generation and even the generation after that. Because the next generation, if we don't grab a hold of them and stabilize them, what will they be able to do with the generation behind them? Nothing. So we've got to look at, again, how God has set it up, even in, in Deuteronomy 6. Again, we teach one generation so that they can teach the next generation and the generation after that. That's how God had it planned. We just simply need to execute God's plan. Now, this morning, this is good. Yes. Question. Oh, those letters. BLM, Black Lives Matter. And we're going to look, just again, take a clip or a, just the tip of the iceberg on that. The next one is CRT, Critical Race Theory. Now, again, depending, then leaving it totally to Fox News, those are cuss words. And you're going to hear a lot more of negative issues regarding this as the election gets closer. Because these are sticks of dynamite that people throw at each other. And what generally happens is that we're caught in the middle of it. <laughs> and sometimes it lands right in front of us. And what do we do? So that when the dynamite explodes, what we get doesn't look like the piece of dynamite in its true sense. We need to go back and get it in its true sense of what it really is. And not the fragments that generally is what we get from the news. But this is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior. Who desires who? Just some folk, all Democrats, all independents, all people. Yeah, even 
those folks in the Republican Party, even those folks who march with a Confederate flag or have white sheets and they ain't on their beds, all people. See, it, it, it's, it takes a God like that to issue our grace. Because left up to us, <laughs> up to us, most of us would not even be here. We would not. But it is pleasing to God who desires all people to be saved and come to what? of the truth. I applaud again your efforts this morning to be here for Bible class. Don't let go of this desire to know more about the Christ and him crucified. Don't let the world nor Satan nor your own flesh convince you, ah, I just show up for worship and they ought to be glad when I do. Okay. Worldview. Again, this is how the world is going to present these issues. The world's view. This is the view without the knowledge and the submission to God. Critical race theory. Again, worldview. Critical race theory theory, an academic construct, and I'll look at that term a little bit more, the construct, it's again one of those cute fancy words that have come down the line from academia, just to be able to say, I know something you don't know, <laughs> was developed as a tool in postgraduate legal schools in doing research to investigate and determine how unjust, and I included sinful. Because we've got to also define it again how God sees. Anything that is unjust, chances are it's sinful. How unjust, sinful laws, racist laws passed, that were passed both locally and nationally directed against black people continued in discriminating against free and enslaved black people during slavery, reconstruction, the Jim Crow and post civil rights years. So it was a construct, something that was developed in academia as a tool to do research as to why that the laws that were passed during slavery and after slavery how these laws continued even into the post-civil rights years, how that these laws continued to discriminate against people of color. This was a tool to analyze as to why, how is it that these laws were passed and many of them were taken off the books, but folk are still acting a fool. People are still acting in a racist manner. How is that possible? We had the civil rights bill passed. We won Brown versus the Board of Education. We've had just recently laws that have recognized redlining how is it that these things continue to be carried out? And that's what I really want to aim at in my message this morning. How is it that these things, even though we make the effort to pass just laws, that injustice continues? Gender as a social construct. A little more than 50 years ago, people believed that men and women had specific gender-related roles determined by biology. Men or women were more nurturing, 
So they were best suited to be mothers. Now remember, again, this is the world view. This is the world's view. Women who stay at home to raise children, men are more aggressive and less nurturing, best suited to go out to work and provide for the family. We don't, we don't believe that anymore about men and women. Do we? Has, has the church been shaped by that kind of thinking as well? And if so, to what degree? I venture to say that many of us may not even realize that our views have been impacted. Why? Because we have not spoken enough and consistent enough from the biblical worldview. And so we're being shaped more and more by how the world thinks. Social construct theory says that humans create constructs in order to make sense of the objective world, which is to say that a group of people generally are found in academia to be able to say those who study sociology know that they look at, again, society, how society does things, why we do things, and decide, well, Society has decided that holidays are days in which we just kick back and relax. So it got to be trending and it became accepted that on holidays or whatever, this is what we do. We've done social constructs in the church, in some of our traditions. Some things that we do we don't know really why we do. We just been doing it for so long. It has become accepted. And so it becomes a construct for this particular group of people. Every congregation has its own flavor, if you will, its own culture. And with that culture, we have things that we have decided works for us. Amen. And there are certain things that doesn't work for us. Now, we don't always decide what works for us based upon the word of God. It's been decided because back in 32, this is what the brethren decided in a business meeting. So we just kept it. Let me share with you one of the things I grew up with that to this day, it, it haunts me. I grew up in a congregation back in the Midwest that when it came to the Lord's table, we had a sacred cloth that covered the communion table. Uh, did anybody else grow up that way? Okay, a few of us. As a child, I was in awe by that supposedly special cloth because it covered up the Lord's table. It ain't like the coffee table I got at the house or even my dining room table. Because brothers would march down, they would get around it and they would fold it up almost like the flag. Okay, wasn't nothing wrong in it of itself. But here became the problem. I found out that there was a congregation not far from us that didn't cover up their communion table. We didn't have fellowship with them. What, uh, what, 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 what do you mean? Did, did they have the bread and the cup? Yeah. But they didn't cover up the table. There can't be righteous people in there. We didn't have fellowship with them. That was our social construct. 
Does anyone know why we put a cloth over the communion table? In the country, you had to deal with what? Thank you, somebody. Whew. Flies. Really? Okay. But now it became a sacred item. See, and here's why, again, sometimes we are troubled when we step back and we take an honest look at who we are and where we are. And here's the problem that I struggle with. Because I'm going to pick up a rock and I'm going to throw it at the Catholics because don't they have sacraments and things that they do, they make sacred. And we said, that ain't right. It's hard. I understand, believe me. It's hard sometimes for us to admit when we are wrong. I grew up with the understanding that parents are always right. And when they're wrong, they're still right. And it hurts me because I took some of that into my years as a parent. And I look back and I said, God, thank you. And I wish I had come to that understanding before. So that it didn't take me so long and was so hard for me to apologize to my children when I was wrong and they knew I was wrong. And I knew that they knew, but I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> it's hard. But God is good. God looks at our mess all the time and says, I'm going to be gracious. I'm going to love you in spite of. And he calls for us to be the same way. Amen. Again, the biblical worldview says that we've got to make sure that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds on a daily basis by the word of God. Again, I am not saying traditions do not have their place, but we need to know why. And if we don't know why, we need to start asking somebody. What's that old saying? You better ask somebody. Because if it is a good tradition, it should stand on its own based upon truth. And not because that's just the way we've been doing it. Now, the ideal of race, we use, and you hear that term, the black race, the white race. That's the wrong term. Based upon the biblical worldview, the Bible says that God made all nations of men from one blood to dwell on the face of the earth, ordaining before our, our appointed season and boundaries of their dwelling. You go back to Genesis chapter 11 on the Tower of Babel. You will see where God executed, where people were dispersed because of their arrogance. God did not disperse them because they were one mind of one language. He dispersed them because of their arrogance. Because they thought and they had the ability to build and we're going to be like God. God said, I got to go down and confound their language. I'm going to get these folk running different parts of the world. But when it comes to race, there's only one. Out of Adam, every DNA is found in every human being and will be until the Lord returns. One race. And I know it takes time to get away from thinking like the world thinks. 
Well, you know how that race is. And we easily fall into those kinds of traps into thinking about other people. Well, you know what they say about those people. <laughs> what do they say about you? Because, you know, you are from Adam's seed. And because Adam sinned, all have sinned and will continue. Amen? Worldview. Black Lives Matter. From the world standpoint, it means something different, depending upon the context in which the word is used. In and of itself, when it was originated, it meant we will no longer be insignificant. We will no longer take the position that black people's lives are not worth a dime. That our presence matter. And we're going to make some noise about it. And on the basis, it's okay with the world. We want to look at how the Bible views black lives matter and why black lives matter. Not from the world's position. The world, again, has a different position. As a movement, there was a time if you were not a part of the movement, they questioned your blackness. Amen. Because the reasons were defined by the world's understanding of why black lives matter. Black Lives Matter, let's go back to that, was found in 2013 in response to the acquittal of Trayvon Martin murder. Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation Incorporated is a global organization in the US, UK, and Canada whose mission is to eradicate white supremacy and build local power. This is a part again of their mission as a institution or organization. We affirm the lives of black, queer, and trans folk, disabled folk, undocumented folk, folk with records, women, and all black lives along the gender spectrum. And again, it's important to understand the context of how they're using it and what that means so that when you embrace as an entity, as an organization, Black Lives Matter, you need to understand what they represent in themselves, okay? Now, the biblical worldview, there is the world's view and a biblical worldview. Remember, we're in it, but not of it. And we have to be reminded to be in it. And I mean in it in the right way. We have to make our presence known. Remember, again, we cannot. Because we are in the world. We were called out of the darkness to be the light, to take the light, to go back into the darkness. Don't love the world nor the things of the world. We're in it, but not of it. Black lives matter because from the Bible standpoint, we are image bearers. We bear the image of God. When God made man, the Bible says man was made after 
our image, our likeness. For what does it profit the man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? What, for, what can, uh, for what can a man give in return for his soul? Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Why? From God's standpoint, does black lives matter? Because all black lives have souls. God is interested in making sure that all black lives' souls are saved. He desires that all people be saved. God recognizes that, again, people are going to fall in difficult situations. Discrimination, racism, based upon external things. But if you die without God's grace, don't matter you black, white, polka dot, whatever your color figuration is, you're lost eternally. Now, every time I think about the concept of eternity, I can't wrap my head around it. Because, see, we're used to thinking in terms of numbers. You know, trillions, zillions, quadrillions, zillions, billions, all of that. Eternity is without end. That's how God thinks. And that's how we need to think. So if I suffer for just a little while, but my soul is saved for eternity, praise God. That, again, does not say that we are not involved in impacting and improving the lives of people. We cannot be so heaven-bound that we're no hallelujah. Instead of CRT, the biblical worldview is MRT, Ministry of Reconciliation Theology. The ministry of reconciliation is what we've been called to as God's people. And I'm going to speak more to that in my message. The ministry of reconciliation. Again, CRT has its place, but it does not replace what God has in mind. Amen. The biblical worldview. Because God desires all people to be saved. This is from the mind of God. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Anyone. Anyone. The old has passed away. Sometimes we have a hard time letting that go of people's past. Sometimes we struggle with our own. Amen. But in the mind of God, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. From this is from God, not us, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us, us, this ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins or trespasses against them, and entrusting to us. I love the fact that this is reiterated. That speaks loud. Just in case you forgot it the first time, I'm going to double up and remind you again. This is why I chose to save you so that you become an instrument for me to reconcile other lost folk. Let's stop being stingy. Amen. Again, the world can't afford for the people of God to take this position any longer. 
to whom much is given, Amen. It's my lesson for you this morning. I, I don't know how much time we have left for any comments or questions before I, I wanted to get through this as quickly as I could. And if there are any questions, I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to, again, these issues of Black Lives Matter and CRT. But they need to be explored more so that we are equipped for the work of ministry. The ministry of reconciling, bringing peace between God and man and between man to man. That is our ministry. That is what God is calling us to. And I believe this, that if God didn't think we were capable, he wouldn't have given it to us. But he has given to us everything that we need for life and godliness through the power of our knowledge, not of ourselves, of our tradition, of him, Christ Jesus. So the more we increase in our knowledge of who Christ is, the more we are able to address the real issues of life and godliness. Amen. Bow with me as we pray. Father God, as we have spent this time in looking at the contrast between how the world sees things that occur and how you see it. Help us again, Father, to not to be conformed to this world's way of thinking. Help us, Father, not to be conformed even to our own traditions in and of themselves. Help us to be renewed daily that we are transformed to look more and more like Christ Jesus, to look and think and act like the people that you called us to be. Forgive, forgive us, Father, when we become lazy and apathetic and thinking that somebody else can do it. Forgive us. Empower us through what you've given to us the gift of the Holy Ghost, that same power that brought Jesus from the grave. Help us to move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. God bless. Give it up.